Hello， 大家好，我是 Cindy。Hello everyone， I'm Cindy。又到了晨读英文的时间。今天我们一起来了解 COVID-19 加强剂 Booster Shot。那今天比较不一样的地方是，我们不是阅读文章，而是一起来看影片。今天的影片内容节录自这一部影片。那待会呢，一起来看这部影片，我帮它加上了中英字幕。那最后会有一点点的讲解。那我们现在就一起来看吧。In September 2021, the CDC recommended COVID-19 booster shots, an additional vaccine dose for the elderly and those at high risk in the U.S. That echoed the booster shot rollout in places like the U.K. and Singapore. But in November, the CDC announced a new recommendation: all adults could get a booster shot. And that idea had been a contentious question among scientists. I do believe that all of us are going to need another shot at some point. It's much more of a gray area for younger people, particularly on the fifties. I don't think we should get hung up on should may. Just go out and get boosted. FDA's Dr. Marion Gruber and Dr. Phil Krause say there's currently no need for boosters for the general population. Dr. Celine Gounder was one of those scientists. She wasn't convinced that we all needed more shots up until recently. So to help me figure out what's going on with boosters, I called her up. I had not planned to get boosted, and yesterday scheduled、um, a third dose. And that's really a decision that was made based on the emergence of Omicron. To start us off, can you sort of just walk us through what the science of needing boosters is? When you get vaccinated, you're stimulating different branches of your immune system. You're stimulating、uh, B cells, T cells, antibody levels. Those antibody levels are what protect you.、Uh, Robustly against infection, particularly、uh, soon after vaccination, but those antibody levels wane. What we saw is from the data in Israel, as well as other countries like the U.S., is you saw a waning in antibody levels at six months after the second dose. But Dr. Gounder emphasized that charts like this shouldn't alarm us. Once those antibodies fade away, the B cells are still there. B cells are these little factories to make antibodies. So when you get re-exposed to the virus, the B cells recognize the virus and kick back into gear and produce antibodies all over again. You're not fully protected against all infection, but you still have very strong, very、uh, long-lived memory B cell responses that are still there to protect you from severe disease, hospitalization, and death. So, if we still have that protection from severe cases, why do we need more antibodies from a booster? There are certain groups in which we do see a reduction in protection against even some of those more severe outcomes, and those are specifically older people. In addition, people who are highly immunocompromised also do benefit from getting additional doses of vaccine. That was the reasoning behind initially limiting boosters to the vulnerable. That while boosters for all adults in general could help replenish antibodies to prevent any infections. They weren't necessary for preventing severe cases, which vaccines continue to do effectively for most people. But many scientists, like Dr. Gounder, have changed their mind on that stance based on the information available about the Omicron variant at the time of this video. Now that you've had the rise of the Omicron variant,、uh, it's a different conversation about boosters. The concern about the Omicron variant is that our vaccines may not fully protect. Against this variant, which has more than 30 mutations in the spike protein, B cells that would have recognized earlier strains of the virus may not recognize Omicron. It has changed so much that your memory immune responses don't recognize it. But that's a prediction based on looking at the genetic sequence. By giving additional doses of vaccine, you can override that relative immune evasion. It's not clear yet whether or not we'll need a new vaccine for the new variant. That was actually a question companies like Pfizer had with the other variants too. So even though there are still a lot of unknowns about Omicron, experts like Dr. Gounder say boosters may be a good tool against it, especially if it turns out to be as bad as some fear. So, at what point after our first round of vaccinations should we get boosted? 
So you should wait six months after your second dose of COVID vaccine if you got the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine before getting a boost. And you should wait two months after getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine before getting a boost. To really get to peak antibody levels, you really want to wait about two weeks. Um, so if you're, say, planning to go visit family over the holidays, I would recommend getting that additional dose of vaccine, that booster dose, about two weeks prior to travel. And that booster doesn't have to be the same one you originally got. The NIH conducted a study looking at, do you start with Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, or Moderna, and then do you boost with Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, or Moderna? The study found that not only is mixing vaccines safe, all combinations work. In the U.S., if you got initial doses of an mRNA vaccine, you can get either one as a third shot. But it's recommended that if you got Johnson & Johnson first, it's most effective to get boosted with an mRNA vaccine. Similarly, in countries like Germany and Korea, as for whether we'll all need boosters for years, it's really too soon to tell. It depends on how much COVID is spreading. Look, boosters are not going to end the pandemic. What is going to end the pandemic is vaccinating people who are not vaccinated. Your risk of infection is proportional to how much virus is circulating in the community, even if you've been boosted. We still have a long way to go to vaccinate the unvaccinated. But Dr. Gounder also emphasized that we can do two things at once. We can continue to vaccinate the unvaccinated, while also strengthening the defenses of the vaccinated. Boosters do provide another layer of protection, especially with the rise of the Omicron variant. I think there is broader consensus now among um, doctors and scientists that everyone 18 and up in the United States who can get a booster should get a booster. That boost won't last forever, but it does buy you time. 看完了影片，你应该有注意到 boost 这个字可以当做名词，也可以当做动词。Get a boost. 提振一下，这边的 boost 是名词。Boost your immune system. 这边的 boost 呢，就是动词，提升你的免疫力。你也可以 get boosted， 或是说 get a booster shot， 都是接种加强剂的意思。那接下来我们看一下，在影片中出现一个比较难的单字。And that idea had been a contentious question among scientists. And that idea had been a contentious question among scientists. Contentious. 刚刚影片中说 that idea had been a contentious question among scientists. Contentious 什么意思呢 ？Contentious 就是 likely to cause disagreement， 有争议的。Contentious, contentious， 有争议的。好，接下来我们来看片语。Start us off. Can you sort of just walk us through what the science of needing boosters is? Start us off. Can you sort of just walk us through what the science of needing boosters is? 影片中记者说 ，To start us off, can you sort of just walk us through? Walk us through 什么意思呢？带我们走。Walk us through， 它的意思呢就是 to slowly and carefully explain something， 耐心指导，就想像有人牵着你一步一步走的那种感觉。所以呢 ，walk us through 就是耐心指导。So when you get re-exposed to the virus, the B cells recognize the virus and kick back into gear and produce antibodies all over again. So when you get re-exposed to the virus, the B cells recognize the virus and kick back into gear and produce antibodies all over again. 接下来一起看这个片语 kick back into gear. The B cells recognize the virus and kick back into gear. Gear 是零件。回到零件中，这是什么意思呢？它的意思就是开始有效运作。那 kick back into gear 是从 get into gear 这个片语呢衍生出来的，从 get into gear 变成 kick back into gear， 意思就是开始有效运作。好啦，那今天这一集就到这边，希望你对加强剂有更多的认识。从这周开始，新闻英文会改成不定期更新。如果你很喜欢新闻英文的话，没关系，不用觉得可惜，因为呢，新闻英文已经有累积了超过七十部影片等着你去复习哦。接下来我会着重在多义的内容，因为我即将在五月份推出一堂多义冲刺课，要帮助同学们在五十天内大幅提升多义成绩。
。今天也有非常实用的二十句多义短句餐厅篇，可以去听看看哦。如果对这个课程有兴趣，可以到资讯栏填写你的 email， 到时候我会在第一时间将课程资讯还有优惠码寄给你。感谢你的收看，每个星期天早上十点我会分享跟考试相关的英文。如果喜欢我的频道，别忘了帮我订阅、按赞，还有分享给你所有在学英文的朋友哦。See you next time. Bye bye.